Saint Parthenius of Hios, like Saint Paisios, a simple monk, who claimed to be a prophet, predicted with absolute time accuracy even the great earthquake of Hios Island of the Aegean Sea in Greece. He was slandered and exiled like Saint Nectarius, like Saint Paisios, a simple monk who claimed to be proactive and prophetic, predicted the great earthquake of Hios, the deadliest in recent modern Greek history. He was slandered and exiled like Saint Nectarius, and uh, he was a seer of the invisible light from childhood. When Parthenius was young, he became uh, an exorcist. He foresaw his end with the vision of the Virgin Mary. He was called in his sleep by the Apostle Mark to renovate his uh, church, which was transformed into a monastery. Saint Macarios Notaras predicted the dissolution of the bonds of his mother's childhood and that the saint monk Parthenius would become into the world. Even the Turkish gendarme who went to arrest him confessed his holiness. While in the end he was so well received that the inhabitants of the island of Hughes, wherever he stepped, the soil was collected for a talisman. Saint Parthenius of Hios is intervening today to take part in the controversy about prophet lust, prophet phobia, prophetophobia. He proved with his life that the man of God also predicts earthquakes and gives an exact time frame and local determination. He was born in the village of Daphnion in Hios in 1815 to pious parents, Michael and Antonia Fragos Kufis. The parents of St. Parthenius, Antonius Francoscufis, or Menis, they called him, and Antonia, born Patelara, lived in Daphnon of Hios. They were old and had no friends. They had fled to uh, St. Macarius Rutara, who was then an ascetic in Hios, asking for his prayers. The first leader of the Colivades urged them to invoke St. Neomartyr Polydorus, who was his spiritual child, assuring them that they would have a son who would become a support for many grieving souls. About his birth, St. Macarius of Corinth, Notaras, who eventually became an ascetic in the affection of Hios, prophesied to the mother of the Holy One, then at an advanced age, the following, he said, you will give birth to a boy, you will name him Polydoros, he will become a monk and many souls will be saved by him. As a child, a clairvoyant, light bathed in uncreated light. Polytheros was born to them. Divine grace visited him already from a tender age. Praying in front of the icon of the Virgin, he saw divine light drawing, uh, dawning on him, as recounted by Archimandrite Joachim's biographer. The young Polytheros did not seem inclined to monasticism, he got engaged to a girl and left to work as a sailor. But returning from a trip, he learned that his betrothed had died. Unable to bear the sudden parting, he went to her grave and dug it up to see her one last time, but he saw the decay that had already begun, and then he realized the futility of the world and the perishability of, his, of this life. He started with trade, and at the same time got engaged to at the age of 20. Within a year, his fiance dies, Returning from a trip, he visits her grave and opening the plaque, he sees her uh, sepsis, pile full of worms, and philosophizes about death and futility and the world, worldliness, and he decides to give it up for good. Solitarity in Neamoni of Hios. Polyderos went to the uh, Neamoni as a, as a uh, cadet, as a, tra as a, uh, as a trainee, in a short time, he became a monk by the name of Parthenius. It takes a great angelic, he takes a great angelic form in the new monastery of Hios, founded in the 10th century AD. He renamed, uh, uh, he was renamed from Polydos to Parthenius. The following is written in the register of the new monastery dated uh, 5th of July, 1843. He, uh, Holy Parthenius himself, uh, he was not even 35 years old, and then they called him Old Parthenios. Asleep, 
his call from Reverend Marcos. He discovers a steep cave on Panthedos in which he decides to settle down. In his sleep, he sees Saint, the Saint Apostle Evangelist Mark dressed in solitary clothing, calling him neighbor and inviting him to come and find him. In fact, just a few meters above the place of his practice, he discovered a deserted lake named after St. Mark. And he, then he began to build a small monastery named after St. Mark the Evangelist. Soon, quite a large number of monks flocked to him. Prescient prophesied a, an earthquake. According to the testimonies of his spiritual children and their descendants, the Holy One, St. Parthenius, had the gift of foresight. He predicted the death of a young man at the age of his monk uh, and urged him to prepare. In 1881, on March 22nd, the deadliest earthquake of the last 200 years in Greece occurred in Chios, with 3,550 3, victims, as the, the uh, St. Parthenius predicted it. As Archimandrite Joachim's biographer reports, one day the monks of St. Macarius saw their elder gazing ecstatically at the sky. They realized he was seeing something. When he recovered from the trance, tearfully he told them that he had seen a black cloud covering the city of Hios. And yes, the man of God predicted even earthquakes. And uh, he said the black cloud covered the uh, city of Hios and the southern villages. He understood that some great evil was about to happen. A few days later, while he was praying, he heard a thundering voice saying to him, Virgin, I will not hide from you that Hios, our, your homeland, will be destroyed. A terrible earthquake will shake her. Nothing will stand and nothing changes my will, which I did not hide from my servant. So St. Parthenius began to warn the pilgrims from September 1880 that on March 22, 1881, Sunday at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, there would be a terrible earthquake. And he gives not only the day, but also the hour, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And I tell you, he said to them, that you may repent and pray, but also that you may guard against that day, he said. Prophetophobia, hence the saint, had information and passed it on. He gave the exact time stamp of the earthquake and the local determination. And these for some who propagate publicly and from a position of principle and expose that the prophetic does not exist after uh, uh, somebody and uh, that the prophetic did not give a time frame. He did. The price of truth, history repeats itself. The inhabitants of the island were terrified by the prophecy and the commander, thinking that this would ensure order, exiled him to Smyrna of uh, uh, the west coast of uh, Turkey. Boarding the ship, the Blessed One told the Christians who were mourning the separation that he would soon be brought back. Before the ship reached Smyrna, the first earthquake occurred. The people rose up and demanded the saints recall from exile, and the Turkish commander was forced to retreat and recall him. Indeed, in March, the prophecy was verified exactly at the time predicted by this holy Saint Parthenius, March 22, 1881, at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. The people of Hios, who already venerated Parthenius as a saint, after that honored him even more, even collecting the soil his feet stepped on as a talisman, and this would mean holy, holy, not only the soil that covers him, but the soil that he stepped on and walked uh, he walked on, making the uh, places holy. On the day of the destruction of Hios from the deadly earthquake of March 22, 1881, the saint cried out, A great mountain will fall and hit Hios. In fact, he prevented a layman named Cosandinos from leaving the, uh, the monastery at the time of the earthquake. Only when he stopped the evil did he say to him, now go and please your wife and your children. Be careful not to hit them because they are all alive. And indeed, Constantine found his family safe and unharmed. His sermon to those who rushed to the monastery for help was, Repent, repent my children, or Hios will sink. The Lord revealed to him the secrets of the hearts of many believers and made it easier for them to confess their sins at the time of redemption, even though he was just a monk who had the gift of, of a confessor he sent them ready. 
the slander, but his saintly life aroused, aroused the envy of some who influenced the then Metropolitan of Hughes against him, St. Nectarius before St. Nectarius Neomonitis both. Two versions or two reasons for his prosecution. A. St. Parthenius, still a young monk, wanted to become an ascetic in the area of Penthodo, which belongs to the new monastery of Hius. The abbot Meletius Fluras not only did not allow him to do so, but also denounced him to the despot of, uh, to the bishop of Cora, Grigorius Costandinidis. And B. The Metropolitan, fearing that suspicions would arise in the Turkish administration that the buildings could be used against the Turks in case of war, denounced the actions of the saint to the Turkish commander. He sent a chaperone to lead Parthenius to plead before him. Zaptis, a simple and benevolent man, went in a chariot and met the young ascetic in a, in a carriage, horse-drawn carriage. Are you the monk? Are you, the, are, are you messing around? Where is your monastery? The saint, the saint showed him a cave and a small chapel made of dry stone. Wow, such poverty. Do you want them to go to jail? Prison for you, he said. The ascetic learned the purpose of his coming and begged him to start the next morning. The Turks showed understanding and asked him, and where will I stay at night? And Parthenius said, there in the cave. Okay, my heart is pounding. Do you want to be here in the little church? I want, he said, but I will sleep outside. Inside is sin. You will sleep inside. The church is yours, he said. They ate something meagerly, and Zaptius took out and offered the faithful Raki, which is a very strong wine, like, I don't know, like vodka. I don't drink, he said. Do I drink here where is the Virgin Mary? It makes you drink. He drank a little and fell asleep, and at night, at midnight, he woke up as if he heard a murmur. He approached the small church, bends over its door, and remained stunned. In the flickering light of the candle, the saint was praying, but he was not touching the earth. He was bathed in the cheerful light. He had raised his hands, and the light was radiating around him. And this is how Christ is, the light of Christ, is visible everywhere, even the non-religious saw it. Soon he lowered his hands, and the light disappeared. The monk was praying for his unworthiness and was crying, crying, and the Turk was listening to the crying, ecstatic, a silent and soft cry between the words of the prayer. The new monastery of Hios. The Turkish gendarme confesses his sanctity, the sanctity of St. Parthenius. As soon as he left, Zaptius left ups, upset alone for the country. He did not dare to disturb the faithful one and to take him with him. And the bishop asked, where is the monk? Despot. Afendi, the monk is a man of God, said the Turk, and related what he had seen. The bishop understood. He learned what he wanted. He now sends another constable to bring the faithful St. Parthenius to Hora on the same day. Are you Parthenius? he asked him. Me? he answered with deep repentance. They accuse you of. They are right. They are. The area is theirs, he said. What are you doing on the mountain? Parthenius said, I pray. And the bishop asked, to which saint? He said, to St. Simeon, the new theologian. The name of the saint jolted the bishop. He saw the uncreated like, light, but you see it too, he said, and fixed his gaze on him. I am the sinner, protested the faithful St. Parthenius, about to cry. It is not humiliating. It's possible for the other to see the saint in a state of unrecognizable grace. The bishop was looking at him carefully, he discerned in this monk a divine power. He felt his sanctity and shocked him. Good, my child, go to the good. Walk as you pray and remember me in your prayer. And uh, now the new, the young Parthenius cast out demons as well. The Metropolitan, the Bishop of Hios Stephanus, in 1984 invoked the wishes of the Holy Saint Parthenius and placed his holy relics, which from time to time emit a gentle fragrance. On a demon-possessed nun, cast out a powerful demon which tormented her for 17 years. You see, the nun was even demon-possessed. I wonder how that happens. In, 50, in 1958, Angela Manidis of San Mateo and Maria at the age of 20 was freed from a demon and found her hearing after worshipping at the tomb of the Holy One, St. Parthenius. 
He had foretold his death with the vision of the Virgin. Forty-five years of rigorous practice he had passed, and he had been an ascetic since he was 23 years old and was now 68 years old. One night where he was sleeping peacefully in the wet and wild, his cave, uh, in his cave, a dream filled him with joy. He saw Our Lady, the Virgin Mary. Virgin, he said to him, in three days, your uh, Saint Parthenia, Parthenia, she said to him, Parthenia in Greek means virginity, virgin. Parthenia, she said to him, in three days, your resting place will be ready. The saints are waiting for you. The saint woke up. He thought he still heard a heavenly message from the mouth of the virgin. I never did good in my life, he said, and the lady of angels came to notify me of my departure. Thus his humility urged him to say, he stood up, he announced it to the monks. In three days I will die, he said. And on Tuesday, December 8, 1883, he lay on his deathbed without any illness to torment him. He received the Immaculate Mysteries, the Holy uh, Eucharist. Where should we bury you, they asked him. Take me by the leg and throw me into a ravine, he answered them, out of humility, just like the great Antonia, Anthony the Great, St. Anthony the Great, to a similar question when he was about to sleep for his dormition. Later, as he saw the saints and angels who had come to accompany him to the abode of the blessed, he said, Welcome, my gentlemen. I expect resurrection of the dead, were his last words. That's what we say, of course, at the end of the creed. St. Parthenia slept peacefully on December 8, 1883, and was buried in the narthex of the humble Catholic of the monastery, the church of the monastery. During his exodus procession, many sick people who embraced his relics recovered their health, while a Neomonite monk on the night of the saint's sleep saw a bright road in the sky from St. Mark, where St. Parthenius had built the monastery, to the heavenly arches with angels kneeling at one and on the other side, and in the end and in the middle, and holy Parthenius passes, accompanied by a dance of ancients and new ascetics. P.S. The writer says, I didn't know of his existence, or I had not kept him in the cloud of saints. I didn't know about him either. It's the first time I'm reading about him. Yesterday, the day of celebration of the second, I prayed to St. Polydorus three times, and today to St. Parthenius appeared to me. The Polydorus, who was sanctified as Parthenius, how humble the saints are, one refers you to another. Give the gift abundantly. St. Parthenius in Hios, the ascetic of St. Marcos, is related to the province of Morphu as the apostle and evangelist Mark comes to the kingdom of Theomorphos. And uh, together with two other apostles from the 70 apostles, Time, Timon and Rodon, there in the Sea of Limtis, they meet Oxybius, the Roman, and this man becomes Saint Oxybius, the first hierarch of the entire wider area of the Diocese of Solos, which is the one that gave birth to the very new Metropolitan of Morphu. And this is uh, from Dippin News, and I've translated this for you from a Greek article. Uh, all, each one of us, of course, is born to become a saint. It's up, it's up to us to say, yes, we want to do that. Um, I wish you all the best blessings and joy and health for the Advent towards Christmas. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.